Seattle is changing. Not slowly, but all at once. Across the skyline, cranes rise over rail tunnels, floating bridges stretch across the bay, and seawalls turn into parks. By 2026, five megaprojects worth nearly $30 billion will reshape the Emerald City's bones, and possibly its destiny. But every blueprint comes with a question. Can a city build this much, this fast, without breaking under its own weight? Seattle's biggest gamble lies underground. The West Seattle Ballard Link Extensions, part of Sound Transit's $54 billion expansion plan, will dig a second light rail tunnel beneath downtown, connecting two new corridors at opposite ends of the city. When complete, it will link dense districts like Ballard, South Lake Union, and West Seattle with the regional light rail spine. It's the backbone of the next era, and it comes with a staggering cost, more than 12 to 15 billion dollars, with projections now edging closer to 20 billion dollars as tunneling designs evolve. Sound Transit's new enterprise initiative, launched in mid-2025, is re-evaluating how to keep the project alive amid a looming 20 to 25 billion dollar shortfall. The agency insists the tunnel must happen. Without it, downtown's current rail system would choke within a decade. West Seattle's four-mile branch is slated for 2032, while the seven-mile Ballard segment follows by 2039. But the groundwork is already shaping Seattle's future, influencing zoning, transit corridors, and even the next generation of housing. If it's delivered, this tunnel could transform mobility across Puget Sound. If not, it could become one of the most expensive, unfinished projects in U.S. history. And while the next tunnel is still being planned, one line to the north is already changing how Seattle moves. Just opened in August 2024, the Linwood Link extension stretched light rail 8.5 miles north, officially connecting Seattle with Snohomish County for the first time. Four new stations, Shoreline South, Shoreline North, Mount Lake Terrace, and Linwood City Center, now form a commuter corridor carrying tens of thousands each day. A ride from Linwood to downtown now takes under 30 minutes, cutting average travel time nearly in half. The project cost about $3.1 billion, and demand came instantly. By 2026, it's expected to carry up to 55,000 daily riders, fueled by new park and rides and bus integrations. Next up, a new station at Northeast 131st Street, scheduled for 2026, filling one of the largest gaps in Seattle's transit network. And beyond that, plans are underway to extend the system all the way to Everett, a 30-mile reach forming the northern spine of Sound Transit's long-term vision. For now, the Linwood Link stands as proof that the region can deliver on promises, a rare win in an era of megaproject delays. North Seattle may finally be connected, but to the south, another line is racing toward completion. The Federal Way Link Extension stretches 7.8 miles from Angle Lake near SeaTac Airport down to downtown Federal Way, connecting three new stations at Kent Des Moines, Star Lake, and Federal Way Transit Center. This $3 billion line was slowed by unstable soil and a region-wide concrete strike, but construction rebounded faster than expected. Trains are already being tested, with passenger service expected to begin December 6, 2025. Once running, it will take just 16 minutes from Federal Way to SeaTac, or 50 minutes to downtown Seattle, entirely traffic-free. Each station integrates bus hubs and park-and-ride decks to serve suburban commuters a crucial design for a city where density fades quickly beyond city limits. Together, Linwood and Federal Way will stretch the Link light rail system to nearly 41 miles, making it one of the longest urban light rail lines in America. For the first time, residents north and south of Seattle will be connected by a single electric backbone. And while the light rail expands above and below ground, Another megaproject is quietly redefining how Seattle's bridges and freeways work. 
Few projects symbolize Seattle's engineering ambition, like the SR520 bridge and HOV program. A decade-long overhaul, transforming one of the city's most vital corridors. The centerpiece is the Evergreen Point Floating Bridge, the longest floating bridge on Earth. 7,710 feet of reinforced concrete pontoons spanning Lake Washington. It replaced the 1960s original, built to withstand storms and earthquakes that would have destroyed the old span. This bridge is part of a $5.7 billion program, stretching from Seattle to Bellevue, adding HOV lanes, wider shoulders, and new pads for cyclists and pedestrians. On Seattle's side, New highway lids at Montlake and Portage Bay reconnect neighborhoods once split by asphalt, with parks and transit stops layered above traffic. When complete, the corridor will save up to 25 minutes for HOV and bus riders during rush hour. It's more than a bridge. It's a model for multimodal highways, where cars, buses, and bikes share the same engineered rhythm. But while concrete and tunnels define Seattle's foundations, the city's most visible transformation is happening right on the waterfront. Where a double-deck highway once thundered above Elliott Bay, a new public waterfront is taking shape. The Waterfront Seattle program, a collection of more than 20 civic projects, is replacing the old Alaskan Way viaduct with a 20-acre linear park and reimagined boulevard. It's the city's largest public works effort since the 1962 World's Fair. The Waterfront Park has already had its grand opening celebration on September 6, 2025, including the new Overlook Walk, a sweeping pedestrian bridge connecting Pike Place Market directly to the bay. Pier 62 and Pier 58 are already open for events with the Alaskan Way Safety Project, finished adding bike lanes, pedestrian signals, and more than 500 trees along the shoreline. Meanwhile, the Elliott Bay Connections Initiative is linking Myrtle Edwards Park and Centennial Park into a continuous waterfront trail, part of Seattle's preparation for the 2026 Fiscal World Cup, when millions of visitors are expected to pass through. Altogether, these efforts total roughly $1.2 billion transforming the edge of downtown from a gray, car-dominated zone into an open public realm of parks, plazas, and art. The waterfront isn't just a beautification, it's a statement. A century after industrialization walled Seattle off from its bay, the city is rebuilding its relationship with water, nature, and people. Before we close, if you've made it this far, Subscribe to Structures Unchained for more stories of cities daring to build the impossible. By 2026, Seattle will be almost unrecognizable. Rail lines stretching 40 miles, floating bridges rebuilt for the next century, and a waterfront reborn from concrete into green. But every milestone carries its own pressure. Yet through all the noise, these mega projects share a single purpose, to prove that infrastructure is more than steel and stone.